Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Homeworkies podcast. And we like to wish you all a very, very happy new year. Yay. <laughs> Greg knows. Yes. Well, it's either, we decided it's either 2023 or 20 or 2003, depending yes. on. So it's like a time machine thing. Yeah. Well, it's like the, the, uh, the way home, the new Hallmark show, the, the time machine kind of thing, or the time, uh, what, what's like a, it's like a magic lake or something. I don't know, but it's, 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 it, we're, we're, we're feeding off of their energy, basically. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to Rachel Wagner and Jax is here. We're back City Girls Pod together again. It's been so long. Too long. And I'm excited that we're diving into the movie because I forgot how it is so full. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And let me just point out something I pointed out before we went live, everyone, is there's sort of a mean girls thing going on here because I did not get the cute red top memo. So uh, I'm just, you know, for what it's worth, I'm just pointing that out to well, our home viewers and Greg listeners. McBride is here and we, I, I really do sincerely look forward to this podcast every year. I, I it's something I've like it, it's a reward for all the hard work of doing all the Christmas movie recaps. I know that I'm going to get to do the the New Year's episode with Greg. So Aww. thank you so much. It's such a nice tradition. I'm very happy to be here, and it's yes. fun to be a trio this year. Yes, yes. yeah, you're going to be a member of City Girls Pod. I love it. Yes. I, well, you know what, Kristen Davis and I, you oh, know, have yeah. that connection. So uh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yes. Yeah. I forgot that. Yeah, that's right. Kristen Davis and and Evelyn Christmas. Perfect. So what we're going to do today is we are uh, going to be previewing the New Year's new movies. I think is what they call it now. I still like Winterfest better, but anyway. uh, Let that go, Rachel. (laughs) As well as the other uh, films coming to Hallmark and the the television show as well. Uh, So we've got lots to preview coming up in January. Uh, and then we are going to be uh, recapping uh, the first Sex and the City movie because we always try to to do a movie that has New Year's in it, New Year's Eve in it, and that one does. And so that's why we brought Jax on. Uh, and uh, it's going to be really fun uh, to do that. So in that part of the episode, it is a already film. So if that's not your jam, then, uh, then we have a mature content or warning here, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, let's talk about Hallmark for January. There's no rest for the weary <laughs> in the world of Hallmark. No. Uh, but yeah. Do you miss, uh, Jax, do you agree about Winterfest? Do you miss Winterfest? Yeah. I mean, I, I think that there's just something that about that title that makes it seem a little bit cozier. Yeah. Um, makes me want to wear a big, like chunky cable knit sweater. <laughs> yes. Um, the new year, new movie is like, it's like the whole new year, new me thing. I yeah. say I'm going to change and then I never do. And then I, <laughs> yeah, we get enough of that from like Weight Watchers commercials. <laughs> you know, it's, it is funny. I miss Winterfest too. And I always feel like it's probably a good Saturday night live spoof of watching the Hallmark executives decide to 86 Winterfest, right? Uh, like, yeah. For- and it is funny because it's like Jack says, Winterfest is so much cozier. And isn't that what Hallmark is all about, right? Is yeah. creating experiences. So New Year, it, it is a little bit colder, but you know, I don't think any of these us. wedding bell movies, I don't think any of them are set in winter. So that's why they do it. They want to, they mm, want to be able point. to just have their movies set whenever they want, but I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that. Come on. That's right. Throw a snowflake into those wedding veil <laughs> movies. All right. We need it our way. <laughs> well, we are going to give our preview rating, uh, one to five snowflakes of how excited you are about it. And so, and as we say, whenever we do the previews, these mean nothing because we often have a coal that will end up being, a, or in this case, low snowflakes that end up being amazing and one that we think is going to be great that isn't so great so it doesn't matter it's all just fun Um, the first one that we have is the dog what rachel means to say is it really matters and pay attention to our reviews (laughs) okay the first one that we have is the dog lover's guide to dating and this is on the first it's our first literally on the first of the year the first movie 
of the year starring Rebecca Dalton and Corey Sevier and director Craig Price, writers Catherine Ray, Kate Somerville, and Juliana Wimbles. And it's Simon believes Chloe is the girl of his dreams, but can't seem to win over her beloved pup. He enlists dog trainer Alex and soon finds himself wondering where his real connection might be. (laughs) So, Greg, you're a big dog person. I am. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was just looking. He was just here. If he comes (laughs) back in, I'll hold him up because he's much cuter than I and also the natural blonde. But for now, he's gone. (laughs) Yes. I think he wanted Winterfest too. Uh, so what do you think about this uh, this movie? What, what, what well, do you think it sounds fun? Well, let me just say January 1st and Hallmark, with all due respect, uh, is often the dog days of winter. And I don't, I have not been a fan of the January 1st movies. Um, so I'm a little nervous about this one. Yeah. Listen, I think it's a cute concept and I am very big into animal rescue, love dogs, love dog trainers. Um, it's a fun formula. I hope I'm surprised, but, um, I get a little nervous and also too, that, you know, it comes out in seven days and there's not even a trailer. Um, so I'm going to give it, I would give it one snowflake, but I'm going to give it two for optimism, Mm -hmm. like a treat. So So there is, there is a preview, but, uh, but I think that like Corsair is just trying to set a world record. Of how many movies he can make in life? I mean, he's been in so many. Oh, there's Latte. Sorry to interrupt, <laughs> Rachel. Please continue. Uh, no, and and I in general I like him. I think he's good, and uh, and Rebecca Dalton is cute. I enjoy her. Uh, so I think that they will have pretty good chemistry. I mean, the the story sounds cute enough. You know, like he's I guess he's interested in this other girl. But then he's like training, he hires Alex to train the dog, her girl, his girlfriend's dog. But I would think that, I mean, not his girlfriend, the, the one he's interested in, the girl of his dreams. But I would think that she would want to be involved in this process of training the dog, right? Well, Wouldn't it sounds it? like a big mystery to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's her beloved pup, I would think that she would want to be in on this dog training situation yeah you would think so and as greg said it sounds like a big mystery but like not the exciting kind that i like that hallmark channel does that we're going to get to preview one that i already can't wait to talk about yeah Mm -hmm. i i mean this i think what looks fun about this is i like broad physical comedy and hallmark's leaning a little bit more into that and i'm excited about that but Usually I need a bit of a palate cleanser after all the Christmas movies. Like I love them, but then like mm-hmm. January, I'm a little slow to get going. I also That's love- why Winterfest was good. Cause it yeah. kind of, it was like that bridge. Yes. You need the bridge <laughs> to kind of get there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, this doesn't I, look like it has any snow at all. No. Of any kind. Just paw prints. <laughs> <laughs> paw prints. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of amazing that this concept took three writers. <laughs> it's kind of well, amazing. listen, <laughs> that happens, right? And it's not, <laughs> it's not always the writers either, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. The more the merrier Hollywood likes to think, and that's not always the case, but yeah. uh, I'm not bitter. Um, <laughs> there's vodka in this. Um yeah, I realize I already gave my rating too early. Yeah, you know what? Maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised because sometimes when you go into a movie um, with low expectations, then it, and also too on January 1st, as Jax is saying, we're all kind of like, you know, thinking, oh my gosh, how tight are my pants? Um, <laughs> so if something entertains us, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, um, we just had the New Year's Eve party. So we're, yeah. we're ready and for- do they? Yeah. There seems like there really is potential to be a little more madcap in this. And, mm-hmm. you know, I wish Hallmark would kind of dive into that. Not in every movie, but that's why we love, you know, while you were sleeping 85 yeah. years later, you know, because True. some of the madcap stuff. Um, so it seems like this movie has a potential for it. So maybe mm-hmm. we'll be a little surprised. Yeah, I'm going to give it two snowflakes just because I do like the stars and you know, dogs can be really cute. So i'll give it to you what do you what do you think uh, uh Jax? i'm gonna come in with two i i have a cat but i love dogs and i saw a psychic recently who said that i'm going 
to live to be a very old woman with lots of dogs is what she said. <laughs> oh, uh, you're going so, the other way. Go, yeah. <laughs> That's really so funny. That happens to... sometimes as you age, you know, you switch. It's okay. We we accept you, Jax, as you are. <laughs> that's really, that's very specific. I'm a cat lady, but I identify as a dog person. That... that is a movie. We're talking after the podcast and getting this thing rolling. All right. Yes. yes. So Greg, what? She what's... said I have a lot of life changes. So I was like, all right, I'm ready for it. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Happy New Year! We got her money's worth on that one. Wait, did we get Jax's so Greg, ratings? She's I'm gonna give her two. snowflake count. I'm gonna give two. it two as well. Okay. So, Greg, what do you what do you give it? How many snowflakes? Well, I had I accidentally forgot how we do this, and I gave it two right at the top. Two. So okay. Two. Two. I give it two paw prints. Okay, so we have three Wedding Bell movies coming out, uh, and they had three this year. It was a big hit great ratings so no shocker that they're having more uh Jax what did you think of the wedding film movies from the this year from 2022 I love these actresses <laughs> I love female friendship being explored I'm not a wedding veil fan uh let me say this I would take these three women in a buddy comedy like we saw with three wise men and a baby I think they're all fantastic and I, this just isn't my jam. Uh, I'll watch them, but it's 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 not. It doesn't do it for me. So yeah, I mean, I really like how they're taking the 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 model or template, I guess you'd say, yeah. of romance novels. Where in a romance novel, you usually have like a a theme to the series. Like you'll have like the fool's gold series or the baseball team series or the whatever. And then you have each book is about a different character in that baseball team or in that, you know, and then you'll see the previous book characters kind of pop in here and there and that kind of thing. And they haven't really embraced that that much on Hallmark, uh, except for maybe like the evergreen movies a little bit. Um, but in, 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 I guess in the wedding March, maybe a little bit too, yeah. but here I like that, that they're doing that. Like each movie is about, these different women there's this theme of this wedding veil running through it all three and you see them all kind of pop in a little bit into each other's movies i love that the problem was is they didn't really give them anything interesting to do in the movie like i like the setup i like the actors i like the characters but the actual plot uh wasn't my favorite uh particularly i have to say particularly Lacey's movie i thought was a snooze it it was just like planning this event the whole time. Um, and then you have Kevin McGarry trying this weird accent. And uh, I, I, it'll be interesting to see if they keep that up or if all of a sudden it's just mysteriously gone because it was terrible. Um, and I, whenever they had the girls together in these scenes in, in, in the three movies, I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed the friendship, like you're saying, but the actual plots, like the second one was just like research, more research in Italy. It was pretty boring. Um, and then the third one was the best one. But you're still, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like Italian research, but it's still research. <laughs> like, it's just not that exciting. I'm sorry. Uh, so I was not a huge fan of these movies. I didn't think they were like awful, but I thought they were kind of boring, all three. Uh, and uh, But other people seem to have enjoyed them more than me. So it's interesting that you agree. Seems like Jax. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I was thinking of Jax too when I was watching the trailers to the new one and the, or the trailer that's out now. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff, because it seems like, especially with this next incarnation of the three movies, they're really trying to attract the sex in the city audience a little bit, right? Because yeah. there's, they're yeah. trying to sell this threesome, which I love the idea of as well. I, as a writer, I feel like the first three would have made one good movie. You know, mm -hmm. it's almost like they drew it out a little bit too much. I think right now we all love things that are familiar. So that's why the series did so well. And of course, all the actors are endearing and each of them bring an audience to it, right? That's a little bit different, which is nice. But, you know, I hope that in these new movies, they do 
you know, you want to treat it as one big whole, but I feel like that was part of the problem with the first three. There wasn't enough going on. So I'm hoping in this next, you know, because you really want to like it. It's sort of like Sex in the City too. I really want to like it, but I know this is, that's a separate episode, but I don't. And yeah. so I I hope I hope in this one, you know, it's, it comes in a little stronger plot wise. You talking about the second movie or in just like that the series? Well, both, but um, I know that's a separate <laughs> podcast. Yes, um, and that, no, I mean, we uh, agree. <laughs> but that's it. Yeah, but um, no. But in terms of these, I I feel like there is is that that chemistry there, and there is that potential to deliver that in in a in a way for now. And I feel like they missed that a little bit mm -hmm. in the first three. Yeah, and I hope. You know, that's what they're selling in the trailer and in the behind the scenes. So I hope that pays off. And if so, you know, good. Yeah. And it's going to be interesting because Hallmark sequels have a pretty bad track record because they have a hard time figuring out what to do next. They got the couples together. And in this case, so all three first movies were all about getting them together with their, with their guys. And, uh, and so what do they do next? with the couples and that's what hallmark struggles with a lot of the times they like add unnecessary drama they have them break up they have things like that where you're just like what uh we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast from the writer of such hallmark channel hits as hitched for the holidays and lights camera christmas and last year's award-winning rom-com novel the last birthday party comes the acclaimed family drama the mother i never had it's the moving and powerful story of LA landscape designer, Nate Cronin, whose father dies, leaving Nate an orphan at 30 years old. But when the provocative and mysterious Amy enters Nate's life soon after, it sends him on a devastating journey to unravel the truth about his past. The Mother I Never Had, which Town and Country Magazine named one of the must read books of fall 2022. It's a novel that asks readers to consider what they would do if they found themselves faced with a parent they never knew existed, and if they could accept the secrets and lies that kept their away for a lifetime. The Mother I Never Had is available through all local and online bookstores, and there's a special Christmas sale, uh, Kindle copies 20% off through January 2nd on Amazon.com only. Be sure to use our affiliate link in the description below. We, th these summaries are super long, so forgive me. But the first one is called The Wedding Veil Expectations. <laughs> and it's, a, it's Avery and her husband, Peter, are in the midst of renovating the old house they purchased, which is proving to be a bigger undertaking than they anticipated. Avery has some exciting news to share with him, but is waiting for just the right moment. Meanwhile, Avery's mother-in-law, Grace, reconnects with a former beau, and Peter has concerns. Between that, the pitfalls of remodeling and navigating the politics of having a new boss at the museum, Avery is lucky to have Emma and Tracy who offer support from afar as well as in person when they decide a video chat won't suffice. When newlywed Tracy returns the antique wedding veil to Emma, the friends may find they haven't seen the last of its magic. So, so Jax, what do you think about all of the shenanigans going on with Avery? I mean, I think to Greg's point about the the trailer and what they're selling now, I'm I'm more intrigued about these ones than I was about the the other ones. I'm gonna say I'm cautiously optimistic about this one that they will add more fun, more comedy, and less needless drama. So I feel like for this one, I'm I'm coming in with a three, a three snowflake situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does sound like there's a bit going on more than just planning that event yeah. in the first one. Uh, this mm -hmm. one, it sounds, I mean, you've got the mother-in-law, you've got her big news. Uh, you've got that all the remodeling. You never see remodeling on Hallmark. Yeah. You never see that. <laughs> uh, and the, the magic of the veil continues. Uh, <laughs> Lacey Schubert is adorable pregnant. So that's fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I think they, they have decent chemistry, Kevin and Lacey. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how that plays out. Like I said, I'm very curious if they drop the accent, that'll make me laugh if they do. Uh, but, uh, but Greg, what do you, how many snowflakes would you get this? 
Well, I'm still recovering a little bit from Jack's using the phrase needless drama because that's one of my uh, past relationships nicknamed me needless drama. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, vodka. Yeah. Um, it, that, that, oh, that listen, I'm home, hopeful. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it three snowflakes and I'm a little leany towards two, but I, I am hopeful. And, you know, listen, I think all these actresses are great. They're all hard workers. Um, and I think they're going to, you know, when you have actors of, of, you know, this kind and something like this, they want it to be strong too. So hopefully yeah. they're coming back in, you know, for the second round a little bit stronger and maybe, maybe they can delve more into character, you know, now that the initial setup is done and, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. So three optimistic snowflakes. Because if I'm not mistaking, the first Wedding Bell movie this year in 2022 with yeah. Lacey did better than any of the Christmas movies of 2021, which is amazing. Wow. It was a huge hit. That. So uh, the next one is called The Wedding Veil Inspiration. And I, I agree. I would give it three, this one, three snowflakes. So then wedding, The Wedding Veil Inspiration, and this is the one that Autumn is leading with Paolo Bernardini back and then Lacey and Allison. And it's, Emma is teaching and working hard to prove she can step into the department chair role uh, as Paulo's lace shop is about to open. On track for her life plan, Emma feels strongly that the things fall into place before she and, and Paulo grow their family. As the couple navigates their busy work schedules and finding the perfect time, Emma bumps heads with the current chair of her department and starts questioning her life choices. With support from Paulo and perhaps a little help from the veil, will Emma find the courage to stop planning her life and start living it? So I I want to be an offensive planners <laughs> with this. I think it's good to plan, plan what's going on in your life and have goals. And and uh, I mean, yeah, you can get a little bit obsessed with it, but I I, I think that it's good to, to like, especially when you're talking about big decisions, like having, you know, starting your family and things like that. Like you, sh you shouldn't just be like, I'm just going for it. <laughs> like you should plan that and think about it. And can you afford it and what's going on? And I don't know. So I, <laughs> it sounds, this, this one sounds a little boring to me, uh, but I love autumn. I, I, I don't know. What do you think Jax about this? Okay, I know this is going to sound like I'm being sarcastic, but I'm not. But I'm really fascinated by like academia. Mm -hmm. If I like, if I didn't go the route, like I got my master's in acting, but I was not going to do that, and I was going to get my um, MA PhD in theater and and go like the academic route. So I love the whole like collegiate, like being on a college campus. Like I actually really like that world. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm interested in that aspect of this. The family planning stuff to me seems like a real snooze fest. Um, so I, I'm divided. I'm mm -hmm. divided on where, on where this is going to go. But I actually do think the politics and dynamics of like a department head and being a professor, I do find that interesting. So I'm going to be hopeful that that's what we lean into a little bit more in this one. Yeah. I mean, I could see that being good. My fear though, is it'll be a lot of business, a lot of, a lot of meetings and a lot of kind of, I don't know. I, I hope that they can make it, make that fun. But what do you think, Greg? I hear you. And I, I empathize. I am reminded that sometimes the best shows are about nothing. Mm -hmm. Like you know, we think of like Friends and Seinfeld and, you know, mm -hmm. they all had their little, each episode had their hook, but it was about the interactions of the characters. So again, I'm hoping that the emphasis is on these characters, on their interpersonal relationships, the way they relate to each other. And so, you know, listen, it could go one way or another, right? Like it could be really fun because then we really are getting more invested in the characters and that sort of thing. Or, it could be like, you know, watching bread toast, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so it's, you know, it's a little hard to tell if, if, if the first three 
um, maybe we're a little bit stronger, we might be more optimistic, you know? Um, so it, it'll really, you know, listen, we'll see. Will we be talking about the next three next December yeah. or yeah. January? Maybe. So I'm going to give this two snowflakes, mostly just for autumn. And I, I guess it, it, it's just it, with the right script, it, it could be, it could be fun. I guess some of this banter uh, between her and the um, chair of her department could be fun. But, uh, but how many would you give it, Jax? Am I allowed to give half snowflakes? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Two and a half, two and a half. Okay. Just because, okay. yeah, you bring on the department head. I really hope that we're getting some <laughs> fire there. <laughs> and Craig, I dream of a department head. Um, <laughs> I was going to give two and a half snowflakes as well, and I was going to do it without asking. Okay. So that's the, that's the kind of rebel I am. But luckily, Jax, you know, took that that hatchet for both of us. So yeah, well, you're a pro a with these previews, so you you're experienced. All right. Last one for this wedding bells is wedding the wedding bell journey, and this is Allison's movie with Victor Webster. And then of course, Lacey and Autumn and it's uh, Tracy is now head of the auction house and Nick's restaurant is such a success. He's looking at expanding their success comes at a cost. However, as it gives them little time to see each other, the couple agree to make time for their long overdue honeymoon. They head to Greece as it's the perfect place to relax and sightsee when a travel delay costs the couple, their hotel room, they get the opportunity to stay on a remote Island nearby. Is it possible? The veil is once again, working its magic and bringing them exactly where they need to be. So I have to say, I, Alice's movie was my favorite of the three last year or this year. And this sounds way better than the other two, in my opinion. I think, I mean, going to Greece, so you're going to have some like travel, you know, thing. It will be fun to see Greece. And uh, the, uh, the, it just sounds like the most fun, like the, the, they've got this delay and then they're staying on this island. And I thought they had really good chemistry in the, in the previous one. And, uh, and so, yeah, this to me sounds a lot better than the other two. What do you think, Jax? Yeah, Victor Webster um, really brings his A game. And I do agree that he and Allison have, have really good chemistry. Um, also, Greece was the first foreign country I visited. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to, to see them explore this. So I'm not much more excited about it than the other two. But I would say, like, I agree that I'm a, I'm a skosh more hopeful about this one. What do you think, Greg? Well, as the bitter screenwriter, I would retitle this movie, Allison Sweeney will do a sequel if she can go to Greece. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that's not the case. By the way, I've met her and she seriously is one of the kindest, nicest people you could ever meet in your life. Um, it does sound a little bit like a travelogue. I think in January, that might be really nice, right? Greece yeah. is beautiful. And to see those locations um, can make any dialogue uh, a little friendlier. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, but well, still gonna... cautious. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give this one four snowflakes just because they had such good chemistry. I liked the last one the best and this plot sounds the most fun. But uh, what about you, Jax? Three and a half for me. Okay. And Greg? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with three. Okay, good. All right. So now we have Love in Glacier National, a national park romance. And, and it just they, trips off your tongue. Yeah. It's like a <laughs> <laughs> and this is on the 28th. It stars Ashley Newbrow and Stephen Huzar. And it sparks fly when Hannah, an expert in avalanche forecasting, brings her new technology to Glacier National Park and faces pushback from the director of mountain of mountain rescue who relies on, more on intuition and common and common sense their dual approach bring bring more than forecasting to the forefront of their hearts and i it makes me laugh with the sparks fly because did you see that i think it's jimmy kimmel uh had uh <laughs> that there were like half a dozen or so uh lifetime description oh. summaries that all started with sparks, sparks fly. fly sparks fly <laughs> that's funny yeah it's like what's going on with all these sparks 
the one that this is sparks fly made me laugh. Um, it was <laughs> funny when you were saying it. I was sort of like, if you have to say the sparks are flying, they're probably not. Yeah. And I well, like these two actors, but I'm not that optimistic that they're going to actually have chemistry with each other. Yeah. I, I love the idea of an avalanche forecaster falling for someone. <laughs> I can't quite get off of yeah. that, you know, so. I mean, yeah. yeah, this is quite a specific job. You know, they love in these movies that people with weird jobs. Uh, but the avalanche forecaster uh, at Gra- <laughs> Glacier National That was Park. almost my major. <laughs> <laughs> my worry is that this will actually not be filmed that much in Glacier National Park, like the Yellowstone movie that they had this year, uh, that you could tell it was filmed somewhere else and then they would put in like this top footage. Um, I mean, maybe they did yeah. a weekend there, maybe. Uh, I'm worried that that's the case, case here as well. Um, I, and I like Steven Huzar a lot. He's, he's always solid. Ashley Newbar is fine. Um, and, uh, but I'm not like super excited about that pairing. Uh, but yeah, the, the, uh, you've got the pushback from the, uh, the mountain rescue, uh, or her, her big technology. <laughs> I don't know this one I would give to, I'm not that excited about it. Do you agree, Jax? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just no. <laughs> like, if I felt confident that I was really going to get to, see, I've never been to Glacier National Park, so I'd love to see it, but I'm not confident that I'll really see it. The fact that it's in the title makes me wonder if it was really shot there. You know what I mean? Like that that had to be part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, because that title. Ooh. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's a national park romance. <laughs> it's it. Well, it, it, it is indeed. Um, I don't know, you know, this, this is one of those and we hit one every new year's Eve, uh, episode, but this one sounds like it's from the writers again, of like SNL or Jimmy Kimmel or somebody huh? like that. It just, Sparks maybe will be surprised, you know, again, like maybe like the wedding bell movie set mostly in Greece, maybe you know, it'll be fun to see it. And, um, you know, it'll be interesting. This is the one that there is the least amount of information of out That's there true. so far. That's true. So, we, don't, uh, we don't have a poster or anything. No, it's um, not even on IMDb. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's not necessarily a bad sign, but it's definitely a two snowflake sign. Yeah. Do you, you agree, Jax, too? Oh, yeah. 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 And maybe we'll see the trailer and we'll be like, oh my gosh, movie of the year. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we'll have to be like Rachel. We must re-record to up our snowflake rating for this. If it ends up being good, we'll 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 do a recap with the three of us. We'll apologize. Yeah, that would be fun. We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies Podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. This thing we're talking about is actually a a series they're doing called The Way Home. And this starts on the 15th. And we're going to have, we haven't really figured exactly what our coverage will be. Uh, but I think that we're going to have Michelle, our, our friend from Scotland, we're going to have her and me, I think are going to do it. Uh, and maybe our, my friend, me too. I don't know. We're figuring it out. We'll, we'll have some kind of coverage for you on this show, but it's, uh, it's the way home. It starts on the 15th and it stars Andy McDowell, Kyler Lay, Evan Williams, and Sadie Lafemme Snow. The Way Home is a family drama following the lives of three generations of women, Kat Landrew, her 15-year-old daughter, Alice, and Kat's mother, Del, who are all strong, willful, and independent. And from the preview, there's a, like, magic lake <laughs> that they 
dive into and that takes them back in time. So she goes back and she sees the, the teenager goes back and sees her mother as a teenager and her grandmother and things like that. And uh, so that's all I, I really know about it, but I, I don't know what do you think Jack's about this new series uh, for Hallmark. I- I love magical realism. I'm excited about this. I I think the generational, the intergenerational aspect is really exciting. Um, It's so intriguing to me to think of this young girl who gets to meet her mom as a teenager. I think as we get older and we realize that our parents are people and have gone through many of the same things that we've gone through. I think this looks really good. Um, I think it's going to be a very emotional watch, very well acted, sort of like stirring up feelings of melancholy and connection. Um, doesn't look like there's going to be a whole lot of laughs, but maybe that'll surprise me. But I'm I'm very excited about this. Annie McDowell can do no wrong in my book. There's not going to be a whole lot of what? Uh, and a whole lot of laughs. I don't oh, think. laughs. Yeah. For some reason, I thought you said giraffes. And I was <laughs> probably no. No, there are a lot of giraffes, giraffes in this one. <laughs> It was originally called the Glacier Park Giraffe Story. They changed it (laughs) to the way home. I'll tell you what's magical about that lake is in the trailer when she pulls the daughter out, her makeup is so perfect. I'm like, I want that brow person that is at the bottom of that lake. Um, Just saying. We can't do what's happening. Well, listen, I'm like, that's good. That like, (laughs) what is the brand there? Um, I, I love Andy McDowell. Like, I think she both as a person and an actor. Um, so, yeah. and she's kind of going like all Jamie Lee Curtis in this, right? With less glam, a little gray hair, that sort of thing. Um, so I, th- and, you know, intergenerational stuff explored from, you know, different viewpoints is always fun. And that it's a series, you know, we can really get more into character and that kind of thing. So I'm excited about this one. I'm very picky when it comes to teenage, like young adult series. I hate the whole trope of the, or the archetype of the sullen, miserable teenager. That's just like, not for me most of the time. Uh, And there's potential that this 15 year old girl could be pretty grating, (laughs) not my favorite, Mm -hmm. but I hope, I hope that, uh, that uh, she's endearing and that she's not too insufferable and yeah I love Andy McDowell I mean it's fun to see her back in a Hallmark series because where she had Cedar Cove yeah. uh, and Kyler Lay I'm really excited to see her back because uh, she was on in Window Wonderland uh, on Hallmark which is one of one of the best uh, so all that is going to be fun I like time travel stories those are uh, always a lot of fun uh, so I feel like this is like sort of Hallmark's version of Doctor Who coming in here. Yes, I do love Doctor Who. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'm going to give it a four. I'm I'm really hopeful that it, it'll be it'll be good. And it's just fun that they're trying something new, something different because we'd had the same shows for so long. Uh, and uh, so it's exciting to to get this. And and they they have a new show ride coming out also which feels like a heartland copy but i'm excited for it nonetheless you know it's so interesting that they're doing a little magic here because for a long time um there's a little insider scoop uh they did not want any magic uh because i remember when i was writing heavenly christmas six years ago even it was bumping up against that that we had heaven in the movie and that Mm, sort of thing so they didn't want any kind of that element you know it's like forbidden at hallmark Luckily we got it through because it was a Hall <laughs> of Fame movie. But so it's interesting that this is coming our way. I think it speaks well for Jackson, my dream to have a little bit more physical comedy in some of these things. And just, you know, Hallmark keeps keeps saying they're gonna, you know, spread their wings when it comes to storytelling. Everything reverts back to a heavenly refer- uh, Christmas reference, by the way, <laughs> wings. Yes. Um, so I'm excited about this. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I, I think it could be something a little different for Hallmark. Yeah. So how many snowflakes would you give it? I'm going to give it an optimistic four. All right, good. Jax, how many did you give it? I'm actually going to give it a 4.5. I'm, I'm very excited. She is all in on the half. That's enough. You've used (laughs) all your halves now, Jax. I used all my halves. I, I, I know. We could only have one more left. I know. I know. And I'm most excited about this one. I can burst. (laughs) 
<laughs> so the last one we have is on the eighth. It's family history mysteries, the buried past. This right, we to- switch channels. Right, yes. Right? Uh, we're on movies and mysteries. It's Janelle Parrish, Niall Mater, uh, director Jonathan Wright, and its genealogist Sophie is an expert at bringing families together. When her close friend Jonathan urgently needs to find a bone marrow donor, the case becomes personal. Uh, so of course, that is. It starts Janelle Parrish and Niall Mater. Uh, we do have a trailer for this. Uh, what? You, so you're excited, Jax? I can't wait. I'm so excited. Look, <laughs> you know, I love Hallmark. I'll always love Hallmark. But they did me real dirty. I think they did me dirtier by canceling most of the mysteries than they did by canceling the bubbly sash. Like, I miss my mysteries. I yeah, want yeah. more. And I think Janelle Parrish is an incredible actress. I love Niall Mater. This looks like a really intriguing mystery. Um, the acting looks like it's incredible. Like in the trailer, she is tearing it up. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm I'm bursting with excitement yeah, yeah. about this one. Yeah, I think they only had five mysteries last year, the yeah. whole year. We got um, rid of Mystery 101, which was my favorite thing on Hallmark. Yeah, and they got rid of on that stupid cliffhanger. Uh, I will it was so stupid it's terrible it was well and John John Christian Plummer had all these plans for where it was going to go and I don't think we're going to see it ever again I don't think so not with Jill with her her new show and and you know Christopher's busy as well uh I don't think so either uh what do you what do you think are you excited about this mystery Greg yeah I think it looks good I think um I think that it looks pretty meaty Mm -hmm. and I think, you know, when you have that, when you have all that going on, then I think it just, you know, it serves the actors. I'm a big fan of Janelle as well. Um, And I, you know, I, she brings her a game to everything that I've seen her in. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. It's interesting because I was watching Dateline last year and there was, there there was a story where uh, this group of genealogists all helped to kind of find uh, the uh, find this the clues and 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 uh, this amateur all these genealogists and I was like that would make a great Hallmark movie. So the fact that they are uh, using a genealogist there, see, yeah, they you got look it. at like Twenty Three and Me, like they just found you know just about a month ago or whatever, but that this woman who'd been kidnapped 50 years ago and they mm-hmm. put her back together with her family just because again of the dna and stuff so it's yeah. it's such a fascinating arena mm-hmm. yes uh so i i'm gonna give this a four four snowflakes i hope it'll be fun uh would did you put give us snowflakes for it Jax? a five it's a blizzard oh. i can't wait it's gonna be awesome <laughs> oh my gosh uh, it, it's an avalanche from the glacier movie <laughs> <laughs> what, what would you give it greg i'm gonna give it four and a half because i've not used up all of mine four and a half snowflakes okay good <laughs> we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies merch store are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or hallmarky in your life what about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Well, let's talk about our New Year's movie. Uh, we're talking about Sex in the City, the movie. Uh, and so, Greg, uh, everybody knows what we think about Sex in the City's show. Was, the, was it a show that you watched when it was airing or- I did watch. Yeah, I watched the original version. I watched a little bit of of and just like that. But yes, mm-hmm. I did watch the show. Um, had great appreciation for it, you know, for the actors and mm-hmm. for the legacy and for what it really gave 
the female audience, obviously its fan base was so wide, but what it gave females at the time that had been previously underserved, especially in sitcoms and not that Sex in the City was a sitcom, but yeah, I have, I have great appreciation mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. Do you feel like you are one of the four ladies? Because I'm, I, we, we've already said, I'm Charlotte and, <laughs> uh, and uh, Jax is Carrie. So do you feel like you fit one of the four ladies? Well, I feel like back in the time, I probably, weirdly enough, felt like I was closer to a Charlotte than anything else. Um, mm -hmm. I knew weirdly I had met Kristen Davis a couple times. And so I knew her and I had been a fan of her since Melrose place when I was three. And, um, uh, thanks for not laughing, Jax. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so I would say I was, was, you know, would probably like to think of myself as a Charlotte, although I was, you know, never that cute. But, oh, you know, always wanted a, you know, always, always was thinking, what would other people think? And I want this to look perfect to other people. So, but I, you know, listen, I, I had a great appreciation for the, for the series. Yeah. So the series ran six seasons and then they had the two movies. And I think every human being agrees that this is the better of the two movies by far. Yes. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's so many, we'll get into it, but yeah. oh my goodness, the, I, I, we're going to have to revisit that second one, but I am not looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be you know, the whole thing is the second one can be summed up like this. They took them out of the city and the yep. city was the fifth character. Yeah. It, it was so stupid. You know, yeah. it, it just, they weren't thinking and everybody was so excited about the first 10 minutes of that movie because yeah. some people felt like they didn't get things quite right in the first one. And so the first 10 minutes of the second one, everyone was so excited. And then all of a sudden we were overseas and it was like, what? You know, just our favorite characters in the world in completely unrelatable circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It it was so upsetting that they did that. Like even in Sex and the City, like the two LA episodes still weren't the better episodes, but it was like, when you're doing a whole series, it was like, oh, sex in another city. And like, it was still like comparing New York to LA. Mm -hmm. that, that was just like so removed from everything. And well, and especially when you've got such like cultural insensitivity, when you're literally going to Abu Dhabi and it was just, it was just not great. It was not, not a great movie, but this one, this one's, I, I feel like it feels like three episodes of the show. Yeah. I mean, I, I was, I was, man, this thing is two and a half hours long. Woo. That is long. <laughs> uh, but really, I, I think you could almost break it down to three separate episodes. And, uh, and I, I like, I like it for the most part. It's fun to see the girls back together. Uh, especially after being a couple months since we finished recapping in August, recapping the show. Um, the, whenever the girls are together, that's fun. Um, I, I don't know. It's hard with the guys in this movie. I mean, what they do with Steve makes me mad. I didn't like it. Um, and then big is frustrating uh, as normal. <laughs> I mean, I wish this, the whole thing could just be about Harry and Charlotte. They're like the best couple by far. We all agree, it's, right? It's so interesting because it's legend now, right? That so many gay men worked on the show. Yeah. And they couldn't write men. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, um, it's true. And I felt like, like, I always wasn't sure about who Charlotte ended up with. I was like, that's not who Charlotte would end up with, I don't think. So I feel like you're right. You know, it's so interesting to watch the movie now, right? Like 2008 is, talk about a magical ache. Like it is so different the mm -hmm. world is so different um you know even to see mr big like sitting there in the new year's eve scene it's like that's right you sit there by yourself and think about what you did mr um it's it's just you know it's sort of so you really do when you watch it again you sort of need to put yourself in a 2008 mindset mm -hmm. um i'm sure Jax knows this you too rachel but it's fascinating to me that the series itself was always eternal spring, summer, 
and a teeny bit of fall. Like this was the, you know, we, we picked this for its New Year's scene, but it's very significant to the movie and even the series because it was the first time they showed winter in Sex and the mm. City. And they, they didn't have any Christmas episodes? No. Yeah, interesting. I forgot and, that. And, you know, I was reading a really interesting interview um, that Michael Patrick King and Sarah Jessica Parker gave specifically about the New Year's scene. And he felt like it was really, that was something that the series had ignored uh, to show women at home alone on New Year's Eve and how significant that feels, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you're married or not, or whatever relationships you're in, that, you know, society has kind of taught us that, that if you don't have these great plans on New Year's Eve, you're somehow, you know, not quite, you know, fitting into everything else. And so, Mm -hmm. Uh, this scene was actually very important to them. And, um, they had originally even shot some dialogue and then decided that they were going to just play, you know, montage. the song, oh. the song over it the whole time, which was such a beautiful version of old Lang Syne. And, uh, and Sarah Jessica Parker, I just want to read this quote. She had said, I loved it because it wasn't about words. It was just about this desperate need to connect to somebody that actually matters to you. And I think that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the New Year's scene just because it's, it's significant to what we're doing here, yeah. but her joining Miranda is really the heart of the sex in the city, I would think, you know, I'd be interested yeah. in what you and Jax think as well. But, and so the, the New Year's Eve song, or scene is really significant to this, you know, and it's a two and a half minute scene, which, you know, it, even in a two and a half hour movie, that's a lot of time. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it was really interesting to watch again. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I thought that was, was really good. And I've said for a long time that I actually think that New Year's is the most coupley of any holiday, even more than Valentine's day, because uh, there's lots of ways that you can just express love on Valentine's day, love for your family, love for your friends. Galentine's kind of has become a thing. Uh, but, uh, with New Year's, if you, 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 at least for me, it's either I, I'm, I try to find a, a couple situation or I am going to a singles activity, which are usually even more depressing than anything else. I don't know. New Year's is just, I think, very couple. Do you agree, Jax? Yeah, it's interesting because I'm having a party this New Year's and it's a lot of couples, but a lot of singles too. And I was surprised that so many people wanted to come, but everyone's like, oh, I hate New Year's. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. So obviously if you were here, you could come because it's such a mix of people. And so many people that I was like, oh, they'll probably have plans already are like, oh no, I do not like this holiday. And yeah, yeah I thought, um, Greg, what you were saying about this scene, I mean, incredibly moving, like the song. And then when Carrie hugs Miranda says, you're not alone. Oh, what? I think we we all also take stock of our lives on New Year's yeah. and our relationships and our careers and our relationship to ourselves and our health and spirituality and everything. And there's just so much happening in the scene. I am desperate for this Halloween. I want to get Carrie's entire outfit because I want to be that for Halloween. I was like the glitter beret, like the, I would want faux fur coat, the boots and the pajamas underneath. I'm like, that is iconic. It might be my favorite Carrie look of all time. It's so And fun. a lot of that was from the series, right? Not just from the movie. And did you also know, I'm sure you guys know this, but it was the only time that they showed Carrie taking the subway going oh down. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize. Yeah. Yep. In the entire Sex and the City world. Um, and it was because you know, uh, I guess the actor that played Miranda was like, she'd never get a cab on New Year's Eve. So they're like, okay, Carrie is going to have to emerge from the subway for like the first time ever, but that makes the outfit all that much better. And just, you know, yeah. just again, there's so much, so much going on. Even yes. they even were very purposeful about our gay friends at the party being like, okay, I'm just going to kiss somebody, you know? Yes. So they really put so much thought into it that anybody watching the movie could relate to that. And so to me that the New Year's scene, really looking back at the movie becomes one of the most powerful scenes in, in the film. Yeah, I agree. 
So they decide, Big and Carrie decide to get engaged and they're buying this, there's this penthouse and she's going to sell her apartment. And so they decide that, well, we better get married, we better get married. And it, and it's all done very sort of matter of factly. It's not like the big, you know, sort of romantic gestures that you might expect. Uh, and that's kind of a clue that maybe things are, that things aren't going to end well as far as the wedding. Um, but they hire Anthony as the wedding planner and, and they also have this whole thing with Enid for Vogue, uh, that, uh, has hires Carrie as the last single girl that's getting married. Uh, and she does this whole bridal shoot and everything, which was really fun. That fashion shoot I thought was really fun. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. How, how do you feel about big, uh, Greg, Are you front? <laughs> What's your opinion about carrying big? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, I feel, you know, just keeping the characters together. I feel like it was, um, I feel like it, it did serve her character to be with somebody like that. I, I, you know, I think the series was, was good for that. And, you know, the fun of what we want a series to be. I think the movie was okay. And I wish the seer, the, the sequel had just shown them, had shown us what life is like, because it is so different dating, especially an up and down relationship, right? With all those fireworks, mm -hmm. what's it like to be normal? And it would have been kind of fun to see Sarah Jessica Parker's character go down that path um, instead of like, okay, we're going to kill him. Um, you know, yeah. and then of course there's all the drama behind the scenes. So it's, it's really hard to watch it without the other noise going on. I guess what's harder too about Big is that You'd think that he's done this three times before. You would think that he would have a little bit more insight in and just be, a, I mean, I guess he is who he is. And, uh, but I don't know. You just think that he would have a little bit more of a clue. Uh, well, it's interesting. I feel her. like the, the men again were sl slightly caricatures. I'd be interested in Jax's uh, take on this, but it's like, when he's eating dinner alone on New Year's Eve, just kind of clueless at the party, like he's he's an endearing guy, right? And so he would either be talking to somebody or he'd be home, you know what I mean? And so I feel like there were a few authenticity issues with men that, again, with hindsight, become a little more glaring. I don't know, Jax, what's your take on it? Yeah, it's interesting with Big because, I mean, as Rachel and I have discussed, like, Carrie Bradshaw is the worst. She can be really annoying, but she takes a lot more accountability for where everything goes with the wedding than I even think she has to with this. Like, I think big is being incredibly selfish. Mm. First of all, I believe no matter how many times you're married, like celebrate love, however many weddings you want. Each one is just a wedding. You don't have to say second wedding, third wedding, whatever. But the fact that big is like I've done this before it's like well boo boo Carrie hasn't you've never done it with her so if this isn't the wedding you want be upfront about it and that's okay but I just think he did her so dirty and you just see how big really is just gonna be big and gonna be selfish um it's he can't help himself yeah well I mean that's what's so frustrating about what they do with Steve because Steve was, I think, the most nuanced, interesting char character of the men. Uh, I mean, I guess you could say like Aiden or, or somebody like that, but, but, uh, but I, I don't know. I think, I mean, I love Harry too, but, but Steve was interesting. He was different and it, like an interesting match for Miranda. So to see them kind of turn him into this bumpkin in the, the series was very frustrating and just like that. Uh, that he was just this kind of idiot that was very frustrating to me and uh, and uh, I hope they fix that in season two somehow um, but I, I felt like in this movie for him to just like randomly have sex with somebody and they don't give any kind of like backstory to it or I mean he just announces it out of nowhere and I was, just, that's not him. That's not his character. I, it didn't fit. I don't like it. Uh, and I don't blame Miranda for 
struggling to forgive, you know, and everybody saying, oh, well, you, you should, you should forgive him. It was just one time. Mm, it's not, it's not one time. Uh, it's there's things that lead up to him making that choice. And uh, so you would have a major break in trust. I don't know. They all treated it like it was just kind of this, mm, no big deal, but that would yeah, be a I, huge I deal. Are like, you kidding me? I feel like I definitely agree with this Steve stuff with, and just like that, like, like you said, they turn him into this bumpkin. It's kind of like, yes. actually, yes. in this though, I actually kind of love this storyline because I thought that, well, I totally agree with you, Rachel, about like, of course it's hard for Miranda to forgive. Like that's totally normal. She feels betrayed. Like I actually thought that Steve, it was out of character. And I think that he knew that he was like, I can't believe I did this. I'm so sorry. And it really gave him a chance like to really, we got to see that vulnerability and that fear that he's going to lose her and this desperation. So I actually thought, even though it was something that made me bummed out, it was an interesting plot point and it got to give the character some interesting things to do. Mm -hmm. I can see that. What do you think about that? about Steve, uh, Greg? I guess I'm more team Rachel on it. Um, in that I feel like a lesson, a lot of people in happy marriages have learned is you sort of marry what you think is the diamond in the rough. And, you know, it's not the big it's, you know, it's the guy that's on the baseball team. And, you know, and then you realize like, oh my gosh, like I've been blind, like this is an amazing person. And I feel like Steve, again, could have uh, uh, embodied that character. So I feel like it was a miss. Um, and to Jax's point, yes, it really served some of the plot, but if you're gonna do that, make it a little bit more authentic, I think, you know? Um, yeah. Or even change it up a bit. Like maybe he didn't cheat and was testing things or whatever, you know. I don't want to rewrite history. But yeah, well, I... we never meet this woman. We never we never get any. It's just like out of the blue, all of a sudden he says it's this. like plot twist. Uh, yeah. but then again, then the movie would have been three hours, Rachel. So yeah, that's true. I feel Keep like he were, I guess for me, I filled in the blanks of like Steve works at a bar. So he's talking to someone at the bar. She doesn't, she's not a regular. She comes in, they're drinking and they, it happens right after. Like I, to <laughs> me, I was like, this doesn't seem that implausible. If someone who works that kind of job, like, yeah, it just didn't to me, I was, it was easy mm -hmm. for me to fill in the blanks how we would have done it, especially because like, it's also, he's at the age where some men kind of have like a midlife crisis. Well, there was that one, uh, one episode where he is flirting with the girl at the bar just to make Miranda jealous. You remember that one? And she's like, I know what you're doing, <laughs> but I love Miranda and Steve. So it's hard for me. I, that I just try to like pretend, pretend and just like that is, is, uh, is just fan fiction. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, so what do we think about Samantha? So she's at, in LA with Smith and he's spending a lot of time, uh, at shoots and different things like that. Um, uh, and she's struggling and she, but she's got her hot neighbor. So she's got Giles Marini next to him and her as her neighbor. And he's super hot and, <laughs> uh, tempting, tempting her big time. And basically kind of her, her conclusion of her arc is that she just doesn't like being in relationships, even with Smith, which is a bummer because it ended so great in the series with her and Smith. They had such a beautiful bond and relationship. So I don't know. I, I, I don't really know why. I mean, it was interesting, I guess, and it's true to Samantha's character so it's fine, I guess, but I was also a little bummed just because I really liked how it ended in the series. Uh, what do you think, Jax? Um, I know a lot of people did like this because they do feel like it was true to Samantha's character. I don't like this at all. <laughs> um, I think they could have even explored um, non-monogamy, having an open relationship. Like, mm -hmm. I think there could have been other things on the table. Um, yeah, I I don't think you need to be in a relationship to be happy and fulfilled. But I just really feel like Samantha and Smith 
had a good thing going. And the only thing was that, yes, she sexually is getting attracted to other people, which is normal. And maybe you could open things up and he's working a lot, but the mechanics of their actual relationship, like, I just felt like, okay, well, you love each other. I think you can maybe explore a little bit more what you can do to keep this connection. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like Smith would have, his character in the show, he would have fought harder. Yes. I agree. He just kind of like, eh, okay. Cause he did That's for your choice. He did. he did fight for her in the series. Yeah. What, what do you think, Greg? About well, Samantha? I think, you know, this is what happens when you take a series like that, that was so innovative for its day and it was on HBO. So it could do things that other series couldn't. And so then you bring back this movie several years later and so I think there's a lot of it that is just like rocks skimming the surface, right? And sometimes I call movies like that an advent calendar because it's like, we have huh? to hit this, we have to hit this, we have to have the hot guy taking a shower, we have to. And so much of that was done in the series through Samantha's character that it it, it feels a little wedged in. Mm. Um and so it's sort of surfacy, and we're kind of all saying the same thing, right? With every relationship we're talking about is we just wanted them to go a little bit deeper, but that's what Sex in the City series did so well. And the movie didn't quite accomplish, you know? And, yeah. and maybe they should have thought a little more about the hardcore fans. And by the way, always easy to, you know, uh, hindsight's twenty twenty. but thought about the hardcore fans instead of the people that were new to it or had just watched a couple episodes that we really did want them to take things to a little bit of a deeper and next level in terms of relationships instead of just kind of, you know, the trailer moments of, of what relationships are. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I agree. I agree. I, and I think by the second movie, they had basically flanderized uh, Samantha's character. Like she was only about sex. That was it. And that was the only thing she thought of. And, uh, and whereas in the show and even a little bit in this movie, there's, there's nuance to her character. She's not like obsessed. I mean, we, and we talked many times actually that she was, she was actually kind of picky in the show about like, she couldn't have somebody who was too tall, couldn't have somebody who was too short, couldn't have somebody like, she wasn't just like a hippie going to bed with anybody. So, and, and they, they, they kind of ruined that in the, <laughs> like, yeah, I don't blame I, her for not coming back. I mean, not only because of the personal problems, but, but just what they kind of had done to her character by the time uh, that I, I understand why even on that level, she wouldn't want to come back. Yeah, I mean, even the stuff that she's saying when, you know, she's waiting for Smith on Valentine's Day and she has all that sushi in her body. And she's saying, you know, I'm not the type of woman that like waits around for a man, all these things. Like there's obviously like a lot of um, deep pain there. And that's something that could have been explored in a really interesting way. Like, you know, I mean- I love therapy and I love watching shows where the characters are in therapy. Like there's so much that could have been done there that gives Samantha more depth rather than like, oh, she's just horned up, mm -hmm. which is yeah. fine to be horned up too. Like that's part of it, <laughs> but there's other things at play as well. Yeah. Also, I thought that Miranda and Steve's therapist was so lame. Like her big insight is that uh, they, uh, they need to like guess fight more I mean I don't know like I thought that she wasn't very helpful like she was completely on like basically Miranda needs to forgive kind of a thing and um she was and, incredible as the baker's wife and in into the woods oh right. <laughs> love, love seeing her <laughs> oh, okay um so we also have them going to Mexico after the wedding is ruined by big and uh I mean, that was kind of fun. That was kind of fun. Them going back and Charlotte getting sick. <laughs> Drink that water. <laughs> I was uncomfortable with Charlotte's uncomfortability of eating food at a five-star resort in Mexico. I was like, I don't know if there's but, anything but, wrong with this. But, it but you shouldn't food. drink from the water in a shower in Mexico. Oh, no, no, no. But even there. No, no, you shouldn't. But Charlotte wouldn't eat any of the food. She had the pudding cups the whole time. 
Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, that. and I was like, I don't know, this feel. No, you sh- you definitely shouldn't drink the water. But like the fact that she wouldn't have anything except for the pudding cups, I was like, I feel a little weird about this. Yes. Again, that's part of the whole Advent calendar thing, right? Uh, you know, physical comedy fart scene. Here we go. Yeah, that's true. You're right. So Carrie decides that she's going to get an assistant. So she interviews these people, and then she ends up hiring Jennifer Hudson. And I think this was right after she won her Oscar, I think, pretty sure. Um, and she's fine. She's cute. As Luis, she falls in love with uh, um, uh, with Will. Is it Will? Will, I think is her guy's name. I forget. Anyway, she falls in love. <laughs> but I thought that her and Carrie had a nice relationship. It was cute. Uh, and, and Carrie gets her a Louis Vuitton. So Louise gets her Louis, which was cute. Yeah, I, I hated was- the purse. It was ugly, but oh, yeah, it was not a cute purse, but I thought they had a really fun dynamic. I also liked yeah. all the interviews that she did for her assistants too. Like, um, they were all really hilarious little cameos. Yeah. And, uh, and then Samantha gets a dog, which was cute to see her. <laughs> yeah. Except I don't like the humping scene with the dog. I feel like that's so a little much yeah it's just yeah. not this movie i, I can I, see i can what see you think you about that Jax? like did that was that okay for you just no it wasn't <laughs> it, it wasn't greg it just was not okay <laughs> as a, as the future dog lady i needed an expert opinion so. <laughs> yes and uh and carrie throws away her phone so now she's a uh a Three four seven girl, not a nine one seven girl. Is that a is that a thing in a, a in New York, Jax? It's very much a thing. I'm still a five seven zero from my coal region days. I don't know why she couldn't keep her old number. Even I've gone through many a phone and kept right. my number. But um, I, I thought that it was an interesting thing because people do have identities based on if they are a nine one seven, a two one two, a three. Same so with LA. Really cool. It's all about that three one zero. That's the weird part about. Out? the weird part about Carrie is that she's kind of a Luddite and you wouldn't think somebody like her, the columnist, you know, giving advice and stuff like that would like, remember in the series, like her problems with her laptop and and not wanting to upgrade. And she never sent an email at a certain point, you know? And so I don't know. It's interesting. You know, it's so funny. Just last night, I watched the original Christmas in Connecticut and you wonder if a little bit of Barbara Stanwyck's character was impetus for Carrie mm. because she also just didn't do anything that she, you know, she didn't cook. She didn't, you know, all the stuff. So it it, it is interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, so then we get the, uh, we get the new year scene we've talked about. She's eating a cup of noodles and watching meet me in St. Louis, which she'd gotten from Louise. And- Originally they were going to make that a Christmas scene by the way. All right. And, yep. And she was going to be running down the streets to ha- Judy Garland singing, have yourself a merry little Christmas. Oh. Um, but they decided to switch it to new year's. And also this is another fun fact that I dug up um, that they wanted the scene where Sarah Jessica Parker's character, you know, comforts and Miranda to connect back to the 2001 episode, my mother, myself, where Miranda had no one to walk her down the aisle. They wanted there to be a direct link between that two. Um, mm. So again, it, it, it's such a it's such a beautifully weighty scene without any dialogue, mm. um, you know, well, which still it, makes it so well written and acted and everything. Yeah. And one of the best episodes of the whole show, I, f- I forget which one it is, but when when she helps Miranda with uh, her mom's funeral, that one's really good too. And remember, she's she has to buy the, she's in that department store, and uh, Miranda getting the the clothes, and she like breaks down. That one's that is that might even be the same episode as the laptop episode, yeah. is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Aiden tries to get her a new laptop, and yeah, that's that's a really good one. Um, but we also have Anthony kissing Stanford in this New Year's montage which is kind of random because uh, of course we know what happens in the next movie, but uh, they kind of hated each other in the series. They didn't get along at all. So it is a little bit revisionist here. 
So all of a sudden happens. Well, that's like I said earlier, the point of that scene was to show like what it's like if you're awkwardly next to somebody at midnight and you're like, mm -hmm. uh, do we kiss or not? And at that time when they wrote the original scene, it was to be like, oh, well, I guess we might as well kiss each other. They weren't yeah. apparent, you know, according to the creator, they weren't forecasting anything. Mm -hmm. Because Stanford was with that guy. I forget his name. Remember the actor? Oh yeah. The, yeah. the hot yeah. young guy. Yeah. The hot yeah. actor. Anyway, but, but I do think it's a, it's a really nice scene. And yeah. When she shows up at Miranda's, it's very, very sweet. She ends up there and I loved, yeah, the version of Audlin sign. And, um, and then we get to fashion week and it was interesting because they have, uh, they have this a whole sequence with the protesters and the furs murder, uh, because we talked about it many times, how surprising it is that the, how the girls wear fur on the show and you just would not see that now and just how much carrie smokes in the show you wouldn't see that now either uh in uh, in the show and i mean they do have her smoking one time in and just like that but she has like all of the she's got like this the the uh kitchen gloves and things like that and everything she's oh i thought it totally it. worked in that i thought this yeah. was funny the smoking in this movie was replaced by like lots of Starbucks product placement and lots yes. of smart water. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, uh, Miranda, uh, Miranda had said to big at the rehearsal dinner that you two are crazy to get married. And so then she tells on Valentine's day, she tells Carrie this and is that I have never kept a secret from you. Last five months, I thought it was a huge mistake. And, and then Carrie says, I, that I thought it was a huge mistake. You left Steve. It's all about forgiveness. And, and so, yeah, they, they, they get really upset and Carrie blames her for what big did, which I think was a lot. I mean, uh, it's not Miranda's fault that he is so weak that he would allow a little comment like that to influence him and on who he's going to marry. I didn't buy this for one second. Yeah. I'm like, of course, Miranda said something like that. She was in the throes of um, grief and, you know, a crisis in her own life. Mm -hmm. And like, that would be a comment that like, if you were in a healthy relationship, Big would be, say to Carrie, like, oh my gosh, Miranda's really in the thick of it. She said, not to get married. Uh -huh. Oh, poor thing. Poor Miranda. Wow. And then it would be over. Like you cannot blame Miranda yeah. for what big did. I don't, I, yeah, no, just no. I agree. Do you agree, Greg? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Get uh, it? I do. <laughs> so we also have <laughs> Charlotte gets pregnant, which is very exciting because it struggled so much and they have Lily, uh, but then, then they, she, she has, the another baby uh and they, so they have lily and rose which again in in just like that you know why her struggle with brick uh instead of rose makes sense because it was so such is it, it was important to her and i so i can understand her struggles there but um so then uh so Louise is put a password on all of the emails from Big. Um so she hadn't read them, she hadn't seen them and he sends all of these letters, the great love letters of history and then followed by the one from him. And uh and he says I know I screwed up but I will love you forever. So yeah, I mean it was fine. <laughs> I mean, in a certain degree, big is just Carrie's person and it's, it's going to always come back to big every time, even no matter what he does, uh, it's going to come back. And, uh, so he, uh, he proposes with the shoe in the closet in the special closet he had made for her. Uh, and they just decide to get married at city hall. So that was, a, I think a nice element for their characters, but, um, uh, and then, uh, he had called all of the girls there. Cause you would want them to be there at her wedding, but, uh, and then they celebrate being 50 and fabulous. 
Uh, so At least that's to get some her due. My gosh, it's like give the woman something. Yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think this movie is fine. I, I it's it basically feels like three kind of standard episodes of the show. Uh, you know, you get fun moments for all of the girls. I wish they treated the guys better. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'd give it a, a, I'd give it three out of five. Yeah. Three out of five. What about you, Jax? You know, I love my halves. I'm going to, I'm going to give this a 3.5 because I do think that that new year's Eve montage is something that like really sticks with me that it's, it's incredibly beautiful and moving. And I think it's, that's makes it, it really tips it over for me. Yeah. What do you think, Greg? I'm going to give it a three as well uh, as you, Rachel, but I am, again, I think the New Year's Eve scene really resonates Mm -hmm. and um, is, is such a nice message, especially for sex in the city, which, you know, we do expect to outrage us a bit or surprise us or all that stuff. But, you know, that, that two and a half minute sequence is pretty lovely and it speaks to friendship and just all sorts of amazing things and even taking the subway so <laughs> yeah but three three snowflakes for me yeah very good all right well thank you so much to both of you i wish you both a super happy new year's and uh, thanks for doing this and i know it's kind of a long episode so i appreciate it and uh Jax, where can people find you at jacqueline c tweets on twitter and jacqueline collier on instagram great and greg where can people find you you can uh, find me at Greg McBride, G-R-E-G-G McBride, one word, on Twitter and Instagram. And I just got to say, next year is a big year. I have a Christmas movie shooting in March, uh, working on a new movie for Lifetime. And it looks like my horror movie, which I think I talk about every New Year's episode. <laughs> it has a new director. So next year could be a big a big uh, year so stay That's tuned so and by the way i have to say i love being part of hallmarkies and jacks it's so nice to to spend some time with you okay. and i just love the community that you all create and the reviews and you know i'm not just a once a year participant i am also a fan oh, <laughs> thank well thank you for having me the feeling is mutual. I really do look forward to it. Uh, anytime I can have you on, it's, it's, I know it's going to be super fun. And uh, so it's a great way to kind of end this intense season for me, at least is to have this thing to look, it's kind of my, my, uh, my prize for, for finishing. So thank you so much. And you can find me at Rachel's reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and around tomatoes, check that out. And uh, follow the podcast at Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast all over social media, except for Facebook, because I got disabled and I have not been able to fix it. So we're not on Facebook right now, uh, but uh, but everything else we're on. And you can find us on Twitter at City Girls Pod if you want more Sex in the City talk, which is super fun. And make sure you check out that playlist. We recapped every single episode of Sex in the City. Uh, it was so fun. And uh, and. Uh, check out the Patreon. It's really fun group. We do watch longs like we did with Greg once. It was so fun. Uh, so check out that. And we also have the merch store, which has City Girls Pod merch and other fun merch. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. And uh, thanks again to both of you. And I wish you both a very, very happy new year. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone. Happy New Year.